All right. So last time Atticus was in the hospital, Cornelius, uh, you guys actually promised Danica, a.k.a. Sasha, that you would help her uh, in exchange for a large donation and endorsement to Anderson River's mayoral campaign. Uh, Cornelius and Phoebe, you dug up some interesting dirt on uh, one of the other cults, including the Doomsday Cult, and you researched some vampires. <gasps> oh my god, I broke my own rules! Oh, shit. What'd you do? What? Cornelius. Oh, uh, I'm not even done with the with the recap yet, but I got to get caught up here. Cornelius, as you and Phoebe are leaving the library, uh, you're only outside for a few seconds, and your skin starts burning. Ew. I'm having a bad time. Uh, are you okay? No. You're not, like, yeah. melting or anything, but, like, you are developing sunburn quite quickly. I'm <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's really, it's really, it's really bad out here, though. Um, can hey. I can I see shade anywhere nearby? Yeah, there's some shade. There's some trees nearby. Yeah, I'm gonna go hang out in that. All right, you go hang out in that. And while you're hanging out in that, let's finish the recap. Uh, Atticus, you also found out that Tobert Fungelstein was gay, uh, and you're now trying to set him up with cheese. Yeah. Uh, and that's basically it, besides the fact that you all have a secret <sighs> Discord group where you're all plotting against me, and I have been informed that this is the episode where you enact your plan. Just the start of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Just the start <laughs> of it. <laughs> um, fantastic. So, Atticus, you have been officially charged from Sinsiba General, the hotel Just hospital. Charged? Discharged? Discharged, yes. You've been officially charged a hospital. God, you're, fuck. You're in charge. <laughs> you're in oh, charge. No. Oops. I don't need... <laughs> we bought a hospital. Oops, I'm the CEO <laughs> of the hospital now. <laughs> no, you have been you have been released, and uh, you have regained 7 HP in the process, with the uh, rest okay. of it coming back in the next few days. Okay, good. Solid. Nice. Oh, um... I guess I'm at home then, probably. All right. Yep. Lily drives you back home. Uh, and you guys are chilling out. And probably Phoebe is there, too. Yeah. Phoebe's Jay chilling is the third wheel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll, I'll let you guys take it away. I assume since everyone is now uh, at their homes, um, I'm I'm Jay chilling with Nancy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I turn to her and I say, we are still owed a favor, right? From Archimedes? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, do you... That guy's straight up scary as fuck, Cornelius. You want to cash in on that? I mean, he very well could literally just, like, slit our throats. I mean, I don't see why he would. And I think... I think I have a really a really good plan, but I think I should text Atticus first. Okay, definitely. Go ahead. Um, so I text Atticus and I say, I have, I, I'll send it in the group chat actually, and I say, I have kind of an unhinged plan. Do you trust me? Atticus sends back, I trust you. What's your plan? Um, so also I, sends a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, so you get back. I think I'm going to cash in that favor that me and Nancy are owed from that scary guy who's in Lily's family. Oh. Okay. Uh, for what? Uh, um, unless you don't want to say over text. More of an in-person thing. Um... We can definitely, like, meet up and discuss later if you want. Okay. Do you want me to set the meeting up with you and Nancy? Or do you want, like, um, what, what would you, how can I help? I think I've got it covered for now. Um, however, 
this will need help from you guys at some point, but I'm going to try and keep it separate from us for political reasons, uh, and then that's followed by approximately 40 question marks. <laughs> Attica sends another question, a question mark back, and she's like, okay, sure, we'll be, we'll be at the apartment. Uh, do you want me to text up emoji? Do you want me to text Lily to have her set up a meeting? Lily is there with you. Uh, and uh, do you want me to ask Lily to set up a meeting? If you want, I'd probably I probably be easier. Of, I guess that would be easier. Yeah. Uh, I turn to Lily and I'm like, uh, "So your uncle owes my friend a favor. Can you? They want to ask him something." Uh well, yeah, of course. Yeah, Uncle Archimedes did say that he would get Cornelius a favor. Okay, great. Um, do you mind setting up a meeting with him? I don't I don't know your family still. I, I should probably meet them someday. Yeah, they're kind of scary, but I'd love for you to come by. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Yeah, it's just been hard since Jenkins passed. <sighs> she gives her a hug. You <laughs> <laughs> really did keep that secret until the day he died. He took it with him to the grave, babe. It's okay. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll set something up. Thanks, sweetie. She gives her a kiss. Uh, yeah, she kisses you. Uh, and she heads off to go get that meeting. Cornelius, approximately uh, forty-five minutes later, you get a text from an unknown number that says uh, three forty-five. Don't be late. Um, is it sent as a uh, shmai message or is it just a normal text? Uh, it's a normal text. He's Android. <laughs> Damn. Um, I like it regardless. Um, <laughs> so so that like he gets a text like back this. that says, um, his number liked a uh, text message <laughs> and then a quote of the entire message that was sent. <laughs> the number texts back a question mark. <laughs> um, he texts back, uh, it's a shmai phone thing. You don't have a shmai phone, do you? He texts back, no, please just come here. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Uh, it is 11.30. Hmm. So I think in the meantime, I will uh, be experimenting with uh, how bad uh, the sun burns me how quickly. Okay, great. Uh... Um how do you want to do that uh so i'd be standing in my house and uh stick in my hand like out the front door okay and it's a beautiful nice sunny day yeah all right so you notice that within about 30 seconds the sunburn sets in hmm. uh and if you keep it out there longer well actually you tell me do you um maybe like five or six extra seconds before um, he's like, all right, maybe that sucks. Uh, and then he takes his hand back inside. All right. The So at 36 seconds, your skin is a deep, dark pink. Uh, it is burning to the touch. And honestly, it already really hurts. Hmm. Um, I'm going to go rummage around uh, the closet and see if I have like a nice little umbrella hanging around. I'm sure you have a nice umbrella in your house. I'm not going to have you roll for that or anything. Cornelius has a beautiful thank, farm. Thank goodness. I take that umbrella uh, and I utilize it when I'm outside. Great. I also maybe put pants on. You definitely put pants on. Now, um, we can we can skip ahead to 340. I just wanted to throw it out there in case anyone had anything else that they wanted to do before your plan um, does Nancy want to come with me? <laughs> uh, Nancy's like, babe, I will come with you if you absolutely want me to. Uh, yeah, no, it's going to be better in case he tries to pull some shit. I'll bring all my guns. Oh my, you don't have to bring all of them. I mean, like a few would probably be reasonable. All right, I'll bring, scary. I'll bring two. Okay. And, uh, she puts them... <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I want to know, know what. What is she wearing? What? What? Where is she hiding these guns? 
I because she managed to fit one in a one piece bathing suit. I have this very distinct image, and I apologize if this is inappropriate, and we can we can retcon this or remove it. But I. I... I just really like the idea of her like pulling back her shirt and like there are holsters in her bra. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> like put that's, them in. That's so good. She's like, yep, that's where those go. <laughs> so she she puts two pistols in either side. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> um, great. And uh, so the two of you head over to the dunst mansion and a uh, uh a, a man greets you at the door an older butler who says well hello there mr miller how are you uh good um i i'm here for a, a meeting at uh 3 45. yes yes i'll get you into the office right away if you and miss needless would follow me please of course. So he leads you through the Dunst Mansion, uh, which, as you can imagine, is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. You pass by some, like, rooms filled with weird objects, um, a library that, even at a quick glance, looks like it holds some deep, dark shit in it. Uh, and eventually, he uh, leads you into this uh, very rustic wooden office there are bookshelves all around but almost every inch of usable wall space has been replaced with hunting trophies mm -hmm. and uh the butler says mr mcgrath will be with you momentarily uh, and closes the doors uh he was goodbye as the door gets closed <laughs> he, he gives you a little -doo -doo, like a little wave back <laughs> excellent uh nancy takes a seat nervously it's uh quite the room yeah uh they this family they love their hunting or at least the mcgraths do they've always been big game hunters uh and then they got involved in the <laughs> contract killer business and oh boy <laughs> You good, babe? Yeah. No, sorry. Um, I'm just, I'm recalling a, a book that I read that um, it was about a guy that like hunting wasn't enough or something. So he started hunting people and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the most dangerous game. Yeah, I think it actually entered public domain a few years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did it? Wow. I guess it. Has it been around that long? Yeah, it really has. Great book. It is. It is. Um, uh, Nancy looks directly at the camera and says, you should all read it when you have time. Cornelius uh, also looks directly into the camera and gives uh, a confirming thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I can't imagine even he would hunt people, though. That sounds a little much. I mean... You, like, killed people for a living? <laughs> well, yeah, but it was for a living. I mean, they, like, hunt for fun, though. You never know. I suppose. Uh, and at that moment, Archimedes McGrath bursts through the door, his gigantic oxygen tank uh, firmly strapped to his back, and he says, Cornelius Miller and Nancy so nice to see you yet again uh, it's excellent to see you too mr archimedes please just archimedes is fine uh and he uh kind of stumbles over into the other chair uh and says so i as much as i would love to exchange pleasantries i suspect you are here on the utmost important business um yes so i was thinking recently about um everything happening in my life and uh i think i have something that uh i would 
I was curious if you could actually help me with this. There is very little that I suspect I wouldn't be able to assist you with, Mr. Miller. Um, so I'll start my, I guess, my request with a question first, and that is, how are your political ties with this town? The Dunstan and the McGrath families hold great sway over the mayoral elections in this city, but that's on the down low, of course. Now, as as a as a silly little request, um, as a silly little we, haha funny request, as a silly little haha funny request, like a silly one. <laughs> Um, would it be within your realm of possibility to, um, without any mention of this as an exchange between us, would you be able to convince the mayor to dissolve and reestablish the town? To dissolve and reestablish Sinsaba? Yes. So Sinsaba would go away, and then, because there's still people living here, obviously we can't just not have a town, reestablish it as maybe new Sinsaba? Sinserberg? New Sinserberg? <laughs> Well, the name oh. the name can be workshopped, but I figured something familiar enough would probably be best for just consistency, I suppose. He looks surprised. He looks shocked by your request, and he says, I'll admit... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I'll admit... This is certainly not the request I would have imagined you would come here for, Mr. Miller. It, uh, it certainly wasn't originally what I had planned, but I have a lot, I have a lot on my plate right now, and I'm thinking giant schemes right now. Giant schemes? I, uh, yes, um, and I can certainly elaborate in the future, but I am running a very tight schedule today. Well, I'll tell you what, as wide and deep as these connections go, I'm sure you can imagine this is no simple task, Mr. Miller. I will have to get together with the other team leaders, the other members of our community, the upper echelon, and discuss your request. Um, it would mean a great deal to me if this could be done. Um, and I feel like it may benefit you and perhaps the effort um to maybe make it seem like it's a hmm i don't i don't i don't know how to word this let me let me start over um if the town is reestablished smaller areas can be renamed what's the mayor's name booker his last name is booker um so, for instance, we could maybe have like a a Mayor Booker Square or like a like a a, a downtown area or of some sort. Village we could, area. We could we could we could maybe a village area of some sort or something. Mister Miller, I will bring your request to the upper echelon. However. I must ask what possible reasoning you could have 
to whisterine rename our fair city. There is more history in the air that we breathe in this town than I believe you could fathom. Um, I just, personally, I think that while this town has an incredible history, um, renaming it doesn't necessarily erase that history. It just adds not only a new layer, um, but it also maybe allows people to move on from traumatic things that have happened in this town. Um, I know recently there was uh, a, a very tragic incident at the Church of Cash Money Danger McStinky, and there have been recent happenings that have just... It, honestly, I don't even think there have been consistent recent happenings. It's, it's stretched back quite a long time that um, things have happened in this town that maybe aren't necessarily positive and... As residents of this town, we should be proud of the heritage of our town. But there are some things that are maybe dark marks on the town's history that people don't want to talk about. So if we maybe reintroduce a, a new name to our town, that, that might be seen as kind of a, a step forward in dealing with parts of our town's history that, frankly, people have been trying to ignore for a very long time. Well, it is so nice to hear a young man such as yourself take an interest in the politics of it all. I believe we can submit this as a proposal, and I believe with the weight that we pull, we can probably push it through. Thank you so much. That would be fantastic. I just, I've been here for a while and it, it really does seem like there, there are a lot of people that live in our community that really don't seem like they're a part of the community. And I feel like with getting people more involved, it, it would be like bringing the community closer in a sense. That's fascinating. A community meeting where we propose the pitch and of course the vote would be rigged in our favor but we could get everyone involved a town gathering yes i quite like the sound of that are you all right do you need me to get anything for you uh he looks at you with this deep dark coldness in his eyes and he says the air in this town is poisonous to me, Mr. Miller, but I couldn't leave if I tried. I'll be all right, quite all right, yes. Sure. To, I, well, that is rather unfortunate, actually. Um, could I get you, like, a, a glass of water or, or something? No, or, no, or I'll get of? water afterwards. Don't worry about me, big sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he says will that be all today um yes i think it will thank um God again thank, voice you, really thank you so to much do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time he says uh and he shakes his hand uh and uh gets up quickly to leave yeah nancy is like deuces uh and follows behind you I give him a little wave. He gives you a, he gives you like a five finger wave. Um, yeah. And on your way out, uh, as you're walking back towards the entrance, Nancy is like, "I thought we were going to like call in all of the other assassins to take on the Doomsday Cult, and instead you used your one request to uh, get a town hall meeting. I mean, there's only one Lily Dunst, Cornelius. We can't do this every three to six months." No, no, I know. Listen, Nancy, this plan came to me last night um, while I was thinking about how I've literally been bit by a vampire and there's like several cults uh, vying for the soul of the town that we live in, which like, you know, realistically, we could just move, but also that wouldn't really solve the problem. Um, I'm thinking of solving the problem. Uh, and this is this is a step one. She like pulls you into 
one of the libraries uh, off of the hallway, and she says, Babe, what is this? Why, why are we doing this? You know how there's like a curse on the town? Yeah. Well, there's probably a bunch of curses here. What if the town was gone? If the town was dissolved and then renamed... There wouldn't be a curse attached to the town. Oh my god. What would that do? What would that affect? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> wow. Babe, that's kind of brilliant. I, like, it, it, I really, I really hope this works because, um, Anderson is, seems like a, a wonderful gentleman, but I think that maybe, um, he knows about, uh, way more than he understands. Um, and I think it maybe was very bad for him. Uh, and I don't think that, uh, him being here is, uh, good for, uh, anyone, uh, but also most specifically himself. And there's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of problems with this town that I would love to see improve. Is it insane to run for mayor? Is that insane? Y you? Uh, he shrugs. Ah, uh, against Atticus's mob-tied brother? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you uh, do you have a platform to go on? Do you, babe? This is a lot. The the election's in four months. Yeah, I know. Um, so I was like, kind of up late last night doing some searching on the internet, and as it turns out, there aren't really like a lot of restrictive rules on who can and can't run for mayor and at what point in uh our area. Um, so I was thinking that, like, if it's too late to actually get on the ballots, um, maybe a write-in is an option, um, and I'm, I'm, I, I'll work on it, but man, I've, I've, God, is this stupid? I've thought about this for one night, and I'm, like, so ready for it. Babe, hold on a minute. Uh, and, um... Nancy dials in Phoebe and Courtney, or Phoebe and Atticus. Hello? Hello. Hey, uh, we're in the Dunst Mansion, and um, Cornelius uh, had a really interesting idea, and uh, he kind of wants to run for mayor. Cornelius, Cor wait, hold on, hold on. Cornelius, you're going to lose. Like, not in a you have a bad platform. Like, I'm sure you have a lovely platform for corn and stuff. But there's a curse that's going to make either my brother or the actual mayor win, no matter what happens. But what if there was no town? What if the town was dissolved and reestablished? Oh. Oh my god. If there's no Sinzaba, there's no mayor of Sinzaba. There's no curse. Oh my god. Exactly. Is this, is but, this what, but, is this what you're talking about? It can't just be Anderson and the current mayor running because they're both part of the same family tied to being elected to the town. So somebody has to run. And I was thinking about it last night and I have come up with a really good platform and I would love it if you guys helped me workshop it. Um, but like, is this stupid? No. Oh my no. God. Cornelius, this is fucking genius. Like if this if this works, you've just solved a bunch of problems. Like Not the even only, like, the only the only problem that this would bring up afterwards is that uh, maybe Anderson uh, would try to kill me. Um, however, I think I can work around that um, by being a, a cool little guy, maybe a little friend of his sister's. Uh, I think cool little guy. <laughs> I think that I can definitely try to help on the down low, 
but I can't like publicly stand behind you or my brother will maybe beat me up a lot. No, no, no. That's, that's so fine. Um, but I was thinking like, if, if there's going to be a town hall meeting, um, that Archimedes is setting up and we are going to be there, like you, you obviously don't have to go, but I will be there. Um, just because I, it was my idea. So I think I have to be there to bring it up or something, mm -hmm. but it's like gonna be rigged so it's gonna go that way anyway but like i think i should announce that i'd like to run for mayor after that and like fucking i don't know man what's there's your... so much that's about to start happening what's your, what's your like plan like what's your big bid well what I said to Archimedes was that um, this town has been ignoring its history for the past however long, and there's, like, a lot of shit that people blatantly ignore. Like, Anderson took me to the hospital after I got bit by a vampire, and I said I got bit by a vampire, and he laughed it off. But it's, like, people ignore shit like that, and we have people who are literally, like, have magic powers, and they don't tell their, like, spouses who moved here from other towns. And, like, why are we ignoring that? That's, like, dangerous, you know? I don't say this lightly, but I think if anyone is going to be a good mayor, I actually think you'd make a fantastic mayor because, like, you're right. This town's fucked up. This like, town is really fucked up. Like, the, 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 like, not, not to ignore probably like a century worth of nepotism that's been happening in this town, but like, the mayors have never, ever acknowledged that there's magic in this town and i get that like maybe it was because like the whole country's government might have gotten involved but like if we just keep it on like a like a down low like this is our town's business kind of situation like why don't we talk about these things am i you right could, like you're so right you could just like set up departments that aren't like you know the magic department you could just be like the non-magic department the, i don't know the bureau of definitely not magic related thing like like we know it is but like larger governing bodies don't know like it's just like the department of education too like the second one that we have <laughs> you know how much easier our jobs would have been do like, trying to save these fucking people if the mayor or this town just had any kind of record about like vampires cults how to stop or like how to f f combat these things like yeah uh, from what i'm understanding I'm pretty sure vampirism's just been running rampant underground in this town for almost a hundred years. Yeah, I mean, like, I found resources in the library about them. Phoebe, like, terrifyingly rented a book from the library. Um, I think she maybe, like, had, um, in a, I don't, I don't know what that was. She was crying. It I was kind of Phoebe. ridiculous. But, like, literally, like, you can go to the public library and find this stuff. It's just slightly more inconvenient to find than normal books because it doesn't have its own section because like magic's not real yes it is i got bit by a vampire and you're telling me magic's not real all of the animals in town convene downtown on a certain night of the week to hang out with who i think is your neighbor jays can like do whatever she does she missed her son having magic like people are born here and have a special thing and literally don't know anything about it like what if you have no support network as most of these people don't holy shit i think you could win i think i could too but it really 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 hinges on this town falling apart at the seams and then being remade. All right. I'm going to tell you a small b black. Is Nancy with you? Nancy, are you still here? Oh, you bet. Hey, Lily's not here, right? No. Okay. Nancy, I'm going to need you to not immediately kill me for suggesting this. But let's say that let's say the town getting renamed doesn't work. Or that the curse doesn't break. Plan B, I'm affected by this curse because of Anderson and his marriage. Cornelius, if you and I got fake but legally married, <laughs> you would be under that curse. And if nothing else, at least you would have a like an actual running. Hmm. 
but also I I'm gay and you're kind of gay and with Nancy so I'm not actually like down for marriage marriage please don't kill me Nancy perhaps we could work to keep your brother distracted he is involved in organized crime correct yeah and there's a lot going on with the cult because we're going to basically get them to endorse him so maybe i could try and get him to focus on some even if we're getting away from the organized crime maybe community projects like um i don't know planting flowers and shit. i don't know what if instead of planting flowers Someone planted a rumor about your brother's not-so-squeaky-clean past. I don't really want that. I don't want my brother or his family to get dragged through the mud. Um, and even worse, I don't want someone to come sniffing around Anderson and then find that. Because you're right, he doesn't have his clean past, that's the whole point. But I don't want him to go to jail. We could definitely... If we wanted to go that route, we could definitely run a smear campaign, but it doesn't have to involve the illegal activities that um, him and Atticus were involved in. Mm, true, true. I would also be worried that if, if the, first of all, if it came back that we had started, the, or it had anything to do with that, even you two, um, Nancy, like, no offense, but if I don't think it'd be that hard to figure out that you were an assassin either. Ooh, that's and then, very true. So we have to make sure that we're not just playing with fire openly because we're all a little bit on fire, guys. <laughs> Atticus, it's too late not to play with fire. Yeah, well, let's put on some uh, fireproof gloves at least. Just, just for precaution because I don't... I don't want to see any of us get more hurt than we already are. But this sounds like an honest to God, like the kind of good idea that's a good idea. Not just, we're just doing this to get the, the fucking shit over with. Like, this could actually help people, Cornelius. I hope it does, because, man, am I tired of having to find books in the library that <laughs> relate to magic stuff? When there is literally no sorting for the magic stuff. No, you want to know what I bet? I'm going to say that there's probably so much magic shit at the archive. I got to get that job back. We could get Blorbo a social security number if we do this. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we can. Blor Blorbo could be his own person who uh, commits tax fraud and also... Um, like, I don't know. And Buck says Blorbo's not going to want to leave. He's not going to want to leave that cult. No, that's fine, though. Listen, we should also figure out a way to stop, get the Church of Cash Money McStinky to stop being a cult and just turn it into a church church and just have them, like, stick to their funky morals in the corner and not, like, culting all over the place. Because I feel like that'll go over a lot better with the rest of the town. Yeah, Since no, I'll, I'll, I can, like, I know that you were like talking about doing stuff with the cult with anderson yeah um, I, have, I might I have to also get... do stuff with the cult on the down low though that's fair i have to get them to publicly endorse anderson and he's then they're going to make a big old campaign thing so um i'll like i said i will help you as much as i can but like i will very much have to actively be advocating for my brother or things will look not good yeah no 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 that's totally understandable i kind of just like expected that though okay like, you, okay like he is your brother and like you know your brother i i appreciate you cornelius he's also scary <laughs> he's yeah all right uh let's go down to city hall right now we can throw your hat in the ring all right well uh i i guess i guess we'll be in touch uh i have to i have to go to town hall good luck oh thanks <laughs> bye
Hey everyone, it's Max here for your regularly scheduled ad break. What is up? Thank you so much for listening to Cold Spiracy 2 Part 6. I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, I have good news. The next episode, Cold Spiracy 2 Part 7, launches September 19th on Patreon and September 26th everywhere else. So, look forward to it then. We are, honestly, we're just about done with Cold Spiracy. Originally, next week was the finale. And then, you know, the actual, I guess, I guess it's the finale now. The actual finale is going to blow you out of the water. This episode is kind of a hint for it. So and look forward to it. It's it's going to be here in two weeks. So it's very exciting. Really cool episode. Hey, I just want to say, uh, if you've told a friend about This Isn't Normal, thank you so much. Telling your friend is literally the number one way to get people on board with the show. Your friends trust you. They trust your judgment. We, t- we trust you. Tell your friends, please. Thank you. Or you can use one of the wonderful social media platforms that we talk about every week and uh, use, the, use the hashtag TinCast, which will uh, help us find you and your art and all the wonderful, cool things that you say about us. Um, you can find us on Twitter at TIN underscore cast, on Tumblr at TIN dash cast, and on TikTok even at TinCast Talk. So uh, yeah, go go do those things. Go do those things. Wahoo. <laughs> um, we have a Patreon too. It's patreon.com slash TinCast. That is our financial support for the show. We have two wonderful tiers for you, just in case you're interested. For $5 a month, you get access to every episode except for holiday specials a week early what an outstanding deal i'm jealous for you if you subscribe to that tier you know it's literally like it lets you jump into the future and i don't know you can feel exclusive or something i don't know to to pull back the curtain a little bit we literally we use patreon just to kind of help um the show stay afloat because it costs money to run it every month um and it's not a full-time job for us or anything so the, the stuff that we make from Patreon, it gets funneled back into just keeping the show running. So it does really help us out. Uh, and then for $10 a month, we thank you each and every week during this portion of the show. And that's why it's time to thank Mango, Amanda Crondar, Morgan Walbrandt, Emmy Lynn Laderna, and Smarties for their continued support of the show. Thank you all so much. I hope you I hope you guys know that there's no like pre-recorded patron thing. I I do I do thank you guys literally every single week. Hey last, no, not last. We have a Discord. You can come join it. It's our pinned tweet on Twitter. Come join literally the most wonderful group of people I have ever had the pleasure of being in a Discord server with. Just just the absolute kindest people. Just the best. I don't thank them enough. Thank you to all our Discordians. Come join a wonderful community over there if you're out there and listening. I know I know you're out there. Come join, why don't you? Last, last but not least, maybe consider leaving a rating or a review on whatever you use to listen to podcasts on. Uh, we just broke Spotify's minimum threshold for reviews, which is really exciting. So if you're if you're listening to this on a service, which I have to imagine you are, I don't think there's a way to listen to it not on a service. Um slide on over there and just leave us a little rating it it helps out it really does it makes us look very professional which we're not but they don't need to know that let's get back into the madness i really hope you're enjoying cult spiracy too we got a few more weeks of this wonderful adventure left and you're not gonna want to miss them (laughs) all right take care drink lots of water be safe we'll catch you next week After you guys hang up, Phoebe, you get a call. Who is it?
Uh, well, you look at your phone and you see it's not actually directed towards your number. It's directed to a subgroup you have set up for the, the ppmpoo.ca hotline. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a phone call? Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's probably Mason and Mango. I'll answer she it. answers it. Hey. Is this Phoebe? Hello? Phoebe, it's Mason. And you hear, hey, Mango. Hey, what's us. up, what's up, Mason and Mango? Yo, you guys figure anything out about the vampires? Uh, yeah, we're 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 like kind of making some progress on that. Why, you guys got anything? Uh, well, I, I wanted we wanted to interview or anything first. What? We wanted to hear if you guys said anything first. Oh, oh, well, we just uh, well, you know, I don't know if you guys knew about like the the cult and everything. Um, the the we did... cult of cash money danger makes stinky. No, the other cult. Oh, the doomsday cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I think we told you guys about yeah. that, didn't we? No. I'm pretty. Anyway, sure we... yeah, you probably sure did. It's did. fine. Okay, okay, okay. But anyway, we. I believe you. I believe you. Um, but we went to the library, um, and we found out just a little bit more. Um, I don't think. I don't think we found out too much. Okay, what, what what did you find out? Hold on, I took notes. <clears throat> Here's the timeline. Uh, we went to the library. I stared at the ceiling for about 20 minutes. <laughs> um, and then uh, I called my friend and we talked and then I did some research and here's what I found. Here's the real timeline. Uh, 1920s, something about a vampire coming here something i don't know a mm-hmm, bunch of mm-hmm. reports uh-huh. uh and then something about georgie Borgi in 1969 damn i need to take better notes <laughs> and then like november of 1969 or something like that the cult just disappears the cult the cult disappeared in 1969 yeah but where oh oh where and i think cornelius gone? wait did uh did cornelius reveal what he found out about bob the accountant bob from accounting i'm sure he was probably mumbling the entire time okay and then i overheard cornelius mumbling about bob from accounting uh i think he was one of the guys that we killed oh or vampires i don't know okay uh 19 1969 do you have any any date range in november 1969 yeah something like that that's it. That's all I got. 19, I put 1968 to 1969 and Colt disappears. Uh, then, yeah, that's it. Sorry, guys. So, before that, they were they were completely active. And then, early to, early November-ish, 1969, nothing. And no, no one's heard anything about or from this group since then. For, for literally over 50 years. Yeah. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah. What the hell could have happened? I, in that my time? theory, my theory was a flu self just didn't come back for a while. You hear? That yeah. sounds like a great idea. Yeah, Mango. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, it's it's listen. That's a pretty good theory. But the fact that no one's heard from them for fifty years, I could. Is there anything else that happened around that time? Phoebe, oh, she pulls out the book. I'm so dumb. She didn't just steal the page. She stole the book. She pulls out the book, and she's going to see if she could find anything else. Um. So you find uh, some little, like, shops that opened up, uh, obituaries, of course. Uh, but there is a page that mentions that a, uh, a bunch of new buildings just went up in downtown, a, a schmoo hall storage facility a uh a little church uh a new bank bunch of bunch of buildings opened up around that time a schmoo hall well so there was like a lot happening this is how phoebe's website is by the way it's very vague (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, there's just like her, no her reporting her her reporting skills. Like she she has good articles, but most of her articles are really bad. Like the Squogard <laughs> is her highlight piece. Yeah, and I think you literally, if I remember correctly, from like the first episode, it was basically like uh, lives on a log or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> So VB's uh, reporting skills are very uh, vague. Yeah. She's like, yeah, Shmuel, uh, a lot of stuff happening in town. I wonder if that could be involved somehow. I mean, and do you think like an influx of income, like what was happening? What if they didn't disappear? What if they ended up somewhere? Like, maybe maybe to go into hibernation. Maybe they were stuck. I don't know. Stuck, like stuck here. Maybe. Uh, obviously, one of them is still around and just showed up for the first time since 1969. Yeah, and why would they just like disappear for 50 years? And just the timing with everything—it's very odd. Super odd. Uh well, if you guys figure anything out, you should uh you should definitely let us know. <laughs> a little team up, oh. you know, a little power hour. We definitely. Which one am I talking? She doesn't say this to them. She's like, uh, which one am I talking to again, Max? Mason. Okay. Thanks, Mason, and thanks, Mango. You got it. Nice. All right. Well, if we find anything else, I'll hit you up. I'll keep you guys updated. Okay. You're the best. Pee pee and poo. We love you. And the phone hangs up. <laughs> God, I got it. I... Thank God I got that you are. <laughs> All right. And then she puts the book away and it's probably never going to be seen again because we're never going to need to look at that. Just going to collect dust. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely won't need that again. No. <laughs> I no. really thought that phone call was Griffin. I did too oh, at first. No. I was like, oh no. I was, I was, really not, I was not prepared for that for an intense phone call like that. <laughs> well, did Atticus overhear it, by the way? Um, I want to say half yes, half no, because I um I got distracted a little bit, so I was half listening, so I got most of it. Okay. <laughs> there wasn't really much to hear, Beth. It, I know it was like we were talking about the cult and I also took notes, which is I was like, I could intervene. But then I was like, I'm not really in this scene, so I can't really do anything. Um, but I also have notes from when you guys were like library smacking. Um, basically, it was they feared tech. They feared all modern technology. Um, they were most active between 68 and 69. Um, they said tech would destroy humanity. And then at the beginning of November 1969, the cult disappeared. That mostly you just miss that they're scared of technology. I forgot. I literally was like, oh, they were technophobes. But then <laughs> I I didn't, I forgot to write that down. So At first if, I was going to make a joke about Amish, but then technophobe is like the, you know, the real word. You want to know who's suspiciously afraid of uh, technology? Danica. Well, that makes sense. I, I mean, I feel like that's because she's she died in the 20s and was born in the 1800s. I mean, you could be right, or that's something that we should keep in the back of our mind banks. Because why have one cult if you could have two? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What she, are you implying? I managed <laughs> to run a cult in the 60s when she was in hell and dead. <laughs> yeah. Is this it's part of your plan? You're going to take no. out all the cults? <laughs> No, you basically now know all our whole plan. Uh, it's a good plan. It's a very good plan. I, I, to be just to break the fourth wall a little bit, I had no idea what they were doing there. <laughs> it, it's brilliant. It really is. I was um, screaming me, about it for weeks. Me and Beth literally came up with this plan after we recorded two weeks ago. <laughs> And then we fleshed it out over the next two days, and then we just had to write it down and not forget it for two weeks. That's exactly why the Discord exists, because I was like, I need access to my plan without scrolling through 50,000 notes about us shit posting. <laughs> and then we were like, oh, maybe we should also tell Mark who will be involved in this. It's true. No, I didn't need to be involved. <laughs> Mark was like, wow, very cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Nice. 
<laughs> Sounds like you no, guys it was got a cool, it. It was a good plan. It was a very good plan. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I'm going to leave it up to you guys for a little bit. If you got any more investigation you want to do. There's something Atticus wants to do. Um, Atticus is going to convince Phoebe to drive her to town hall. Okay. Okay. Getting in uh, my car. So we go to town hall. Okay. Um, and she turns, Atticus turns to Phoebe and says, okay, I am going to go try and convince the mayor to give me my job back. Um, so you stay here and I will come back either with a job or without one. Uh, well, okay. Unless you want to come in and um, stand with me, I guess. Well, no, actually, that's probably not for the best. No, I'm going to go to the Cheese and Chucks down the street for a minute. Cheese oh, and shit. Chucks. Yeah. <laughs> what they... is cheese and chucks? Cheese and chucks. Max, that's chucks and cheeses. Come yeah. On. They oh. give it, the, the only reason Phoebe's going there is because she can't get like totally crunk there. They'll give you a glass of wine, but they won't give you more. Mm-hmm. So she's just going to go have a glass of wine at chunks and cheese. Oh, it's getting worse. Yeah, Atticus gets out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phoebe, you go to Chunks and Cheeses, and Atticus, you go to uh, you go to the, the town hall. Do you bump into Cornelius, by the way? That'd be really funny. I definitely feel like you really guys funny. bump into each no, other. I have no idea where we would run into each other, but... At, at town hall? No, I know, but, like, where? Town hall Probably in the lobby? Like a large building. Like, Cornelius lobby, is leaving, having signed up for the mayoral race, and Atticus is, like, coming in. <laughs> Like past, and she's like, "Oh, hey, ha- hi." <laughs> oh, hey, stranger. Uh, I, I'm off to go get my job back. Maybe. I uh, maybe just got on the ballot. I maybe think that's super cool. Well, good Bye. luck with your job. <laughs> I give her a fist bump. She's like, ah, as she was hobbling away. <laughs> Uh, and then she goes in. Is, is there anyone at the reception desk? Uh, yeah, I think Rose still has her job. Oh, fuck. Okay, I hobble up to Rose. Atticus, no hey. Problem. How's it going? Hi. hi. Uh, well, I'm out of the hospital now, so better than before. Is your dad in? Well, yeah. Uh, I might not be doing something. You want me to buzz him? Would you mind? Could I request a meeting with him, please? Sure. Let me see if he's busy. Uh, and she dials and says, no, uh, you can go on in. Okay, thank you. Before I, uh, I go in there, let me ask real quick. Did um, did he ever fill up my old position? Oh, no, that, those files, man, they're just collecting dust. Interesting. Okay, thank you, Rose. I appreciate you. And she walks away. All right, you go and you meet the mayor who says, Atticus Rivers, my daughter-in-law, kind of? Mr. Mayor, yeah, legally, I guess so. Really legally. nice to see you again. Yes, <laughs> legally. Um, Take a seat. What can I do for you? Uh, she sits down. She goes, oh, sorry, I just actually got out of the hospital again. Um, okay, let me be 100% clear with you, or here and honest with you. So I don't really know how you feel about Anderson, my twin brother, um, who's married to Rose, your daughter. And I yep, know I with... I know who they are, Atticus. I'm sorry. I, I this is awkward. Basically, <laughs> I am here to ask you to consider hiring me back for the archivist position. And I know it's a bit awkward with my brother and all, but I I don't really necessarily want to be viewed under the uh, this is just Anderson's, you know, sister. Um, just like you don't want to just be the father of Rose or the father of your fucking political opponent. Um, I'm the only and the best person in this town suited to finish this filing job. And I'm so passionate about it, uh, that I just got out of being kidnapped for like three and a half years. Um, and I still really want this job. So 
would you consider hiring me back on at least part time, at least until the election, I guess? As the town's archivist? Yes, sir. Atticus, we would love to have you back on board. Thank you. I I didn't think you would, but I I promise I'm going to do a fucking great job on those files. I know you will. All right. Well, I'm sure you're very busy. I won't take any more of your time. Nice to see you. I'll expect you here Monday morning. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. She skedaddles. <laughs> All right. You head back out into uh, Rose's office space, and as you walk by, she grabs your hand tight as ice. Uh, how, yes? You turn towards her, and she has a smile, but she looks very pale. And she says, Atticus, you would tell me if Anderson was involved in anything uh, uh, bad, w would you? What what do you mean bad? Bad um uh Ill illegal. Um if I knew he was currently doing something illegal, yes. But also Rose, I don't mean to be rude. Um but I it wouldn't really want to insert myself between your you and my brother and your marriage. That just feels um wrong well it's not just our marriage there's boo to think about right are you nervous about that he, you think he's doing something no i i trust him i trust him with all my heart i just you know him better than anyone and uh i would never ask you to step between us but I hope you can understand where I, as a mother, would be coming from. Rose, let me... Let me swear something to you right now. My brother and I are complicated, and we always will be. But I will never, ever let anything happen to Boo. If it's within my power to stop, to help... Rose, I love that kid, and I will do absolutely everything in my power to make sure that he gets to grow up in a safe and happy environment. I swear that I will always be there for Boo. Thank you, Atticus. That means a lot. And she uh, lets go of your hand. She claps her shoulder a little bit and she's like, you and I should probably like hang out sometime maybe I, I we don't exactly know each other very well and i think we're now family forever so um uh oh also i got my old job back so i will uh see you on monday also oh congratulations i i'm so sorry there's been some sort of uh town hall that they meeting that they want to schedule i i gotta try and take care of some stuff oh like right now uh yeah i mean it, there's I, this order just came in from the mayor. I don't even know who, what's got him all up in a tizzy, but I, I got to get this thing sorted, figured out, scheduled. Oh, no problem. Okay, well, I'll leave you alone, uh, but I'll see you Monday. And she starts walking out. Okay, you walk out. Meanwhile, at ch Chunks and Cheeses. <laughs> God, I really hate that name. Wow. Yeah, uh, Phoebe, they have served you exactly one drink. Uh, how are the vibes? Um probably chunky and cheesy i fucking hate this place wow there's just something something about it i do not vibe you, with you walk in and it's like walking into a soup <laughs> what what is that <laughs> what does that mean why do you always find the worst restaurants <laughs> well chunk chunk and cheese isn't really a restaurant right uh, you uh, why are you asking me like i know what chunk and cheese is Th this is this is your child i i 
I am just a, a participant in your world right now. I, I need I need a picture painted for me about right, this soup right. building that you've concocted. Right. Let me I let me let me paint you a picture. Oh wait, wait, please, Will, give me your interpretation. <laughs> I personally imagine that it's like the rainforest cafe of like bars. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. And that's that's all I'll give you. I'm okay. not elaborating on that. It's the rainforest cafe of like dive bars. Good luck. <laughs> let me let me give you my uh, image of chunk and cheeses. So it's you've got like your standard like sit down area. Let me start with the outside. Sorry. The the outside. It's like so the mascot. It has a mascot, of course. Um. It's okay. a little fucking, it's a little, like, possum, uh, <laughs> and it's, it's got its, it's, like, its tail is, like, formed as, like, sunglasses around its face, and it's mm -hmm. got, like, a backwards cap on, um, and it's got a little mustache, like, um, not, like, a handlebar mustache, almost like a, like, a gentleman's, like, a curved mustache, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he waxes it in the morning, right? The logo, that's it, that's it. There's not chunk and cheese, it doesn't say anywhere, it's just a fucking possum. <laughs> I um I never like ever ever want to encourage people to like draw things based on our show. If you draw things based on our show, uh, I can't even tell you how much we love that. I, it means the world to us. If anyone draws the fucking ch chunk and cheeses mascot, I will shit myself live on air. Please. Uh, Max, don't. now that you've said that, it's time to hold you to it. No, don't hold it. No, we're okay. Everybody draw their rendition of Chunk and Cheese tonight. No, no. Hey, 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 <laughs> live on air. Ma no. Listen to Max shit his pants. Please. Um, and then the inside standard, disgusting. Like it's like a McDonald's sized play place, uh, and like three tables. Uh, and like I said, it's fucking humid and disgusting when you walk in there. So it's like walking into soup. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh how's the, how are the, how are the drinks and the food though? Um the drink was good. I sh it, that's all she got. It was a little like uh not even like a solo cup, like smaller than a solo cup, like a little 7 ounce Dixie cup uh filled to the brim with like a rosé. Okay. Very nice. Which is actually probably one of phoebe's first legal drinks because she was only 19 when you guys left sand for sandland yeah her first legal drink is out of fucking chunk and cheese <laughs> oh, great well you're while you're enjoying your rosé your phone rings again uh and you see it's it's the same uh call to the tip line he answers it again hello all right so uh before you hear talking you hear what sound like uh footsteps echoing through a hallway then you hear Phoebe. Phoebe, it's Mason. It's Mason from Mason and Mango. Hey, Mason, what's up? Yo, I did some. I did some digging. I did some digging, Phoebe. Okay, what'd you get? That that U-Haul. That the Shmoo Hall building. Yeah. Georgie Porgy had a, had a storage space here. Georgie Porgy owned a Shmoo Hall. Yeah, he had one of the lockers here. Oh, a locker. Okay. Uh, how did you find that out? Well, I, you gave me the names, you gave me the buildings. I just wanted to see if there were any connections. I found one, Phoebe, I found one. Okay, I, can you do me a favor? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, go, does the, sh find out if the Shmoo Hall building still exists, obviously. I'm here, I'm here in the Shmoo Hall. Okay, you're a step ahead of me then. Do you know the, do you know the locker number? I bribed, I bribed the security guy. Okay, okay. And we're heading towards go. it right now. Okay. Um I okay, so how close are you? Because I'll stay on the phone with you. I think I think this is it. 305. Okay. Uh and Did you, you hear a key? You hear it? That's weird. It looks like the it's unlocked. And uh you hear yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh and then the heavy creep of the door opening and Phoebe you hear a few strange sounds it's like this this heavy repetitive uh 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 and then you hear what the fuck and then it hangs up uh she 
uh okay she like hangs on for a second she's like uh mason oh there's nothing there oh fuck uh she puts a 20 down on the table and she runs out all right and that's where we're gonna end things for today <laughs> wait we can't end yet i'm almost done with my oh, with shit. my drawing with your drawing yeah my chunk and cheese oh okay God. does anyone else have anything they wanted i don't know that was that's it for me for today uh yeah i call anderson <laughs> okay great you call anderson and anderson says hey atticus hey anderson i just wanted to give you a heads up um i got my old job back at the town hall um, and also, you should be nicer to your wife. Rose looks really stressed out. You should take her out on a really nice date and just be nice to her. Rose looks stressed. Did she tell you anything? No, no I'm not involving. I'm not injecting myself in your marriage, but Atticus, you should did take... She, did she tell you something? She did not tell me anything. Can you roll fast talk? Just... She didn't tell me anything. She oh, asked that's... me a question that, that I didn't answer. She asked me a question I didn't answer. Do you say that to me or him? you i'm saying that to you i didn't lie he, she never told me anything she asked me a question that i didn't answer all right uh anderson says sure i'll take her out for a nice dinner why did you say it like why you're so suspicious anderson just <laughs> you married her be nice to your wife man all right yes of course a, a dinner a dinner yes that's i'll do that i'll babysit boo just don't don't just try and Relax. I know there's a lot happening right now, but you're a person, Anderson. Just relax. Well, it's it's coming together so quickly, Atticus. It's I'm sorry. The the election, the Do you know where do you know how to summon the demon yet? No, I'm not yet, but I'm working on it. I I have someone looking into it. So, we're And when I say someone, I mean fuck, someone. <sighs> Should I just get Tobert on this? Should I have him try and find whatever it, it's a book, right? A, a book. Anderson, there's no one who's going to do this job better than I am. You say that, but we don't, we don't have the book yet. We don't. I can't, I, if I could pull it out of thin air, I would. But it's an ancient magical tome that's been lost for hundreds of years. So, just give me some time to find it, okay? Fuck. Okay, yes, yes, of course, dinner, book. Okay, yes, uh, talk to you later. Hey okay take a breath and just remember that it's okay and she hangs up okay mark your drawing is absolutely repulsive where is that's, it uh, oh, that's in it creative Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know what it looks like it looks like a lakitu but like with a giant penis nose it looks like it's lactating <sighs> it does look like it's lactating <laughs> The lactating nipples are definitely a part of um, <laughs> chunk and That's cheese. So <laughs> There's like nipples all over the play place. Oh. <laughs> They're all dripping. <laughs> awful. Just absolutely awful. Listen, if you write out a text version of the description of this mascot, I will draw it tonight as well. Okay. Okay. I got you. Great. I can do that fantastic now i just hope you can all handle my turn oh god well on that note i'm gonna stop the recording do to do do to do do recording again because i almost forgot it is the end of the second session and as such cornelius as you are exiting town hall holding your umbrella above your head you feel this shiver rush through your body. And you feel two things. You actually feel slightly stronger. But you also feel like Nancy starting to look a little appetizing. Oh. She's always looked appetizing. But it's not <laughs> just <laughs> Nancy. As you look around at all the people minding their own business, you have the very slightest of urges to just sink your teeth into them. Hmm. And uh, we have our two effects here, which is plus permanent five strength. Whoa. 
and a very slight bloodlust. Hmm. Delicious. Delicious! All right. Glad I could keep up with that. So uh, before we begin, can I read you guys a, something on Twitter that I just stumbled across? Yes, sure. please. All right. This was actually, it was recommended because Will liked it. It's a shirt. Uh, and it says, if I fart and you can hear it, it means you are not practicing social distancing. If you can smell it, it means you are not wearing your mask right. And if you can't smell it, you better go for a swap test. It really covers all the bases. It really does. It's like, guess what? I farted. Go go get Chester COVID. Um, get is that from COVID. is that from shirts that go hard? That is from shirts that go hard. That's an excellent account. You guys should follow it. There's some real genuine bangers on there. Honestly, that shirt does go hard. It really, it actually, it actually does go very hard. It's, it's like it's one of my favorite um, Twitter accounts. Right behind, uh, or right right ahead of poorly translated shirts. Yeah. And I am going to absolutely <laughs> fucking <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Um. Should we? Should I... we just break it and say what Will did? Yeah. <laughs> Rose tentatively <laughs> smacks divorce button. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I meant to hit wait. I hold that one until this conversation was done, and I got so excited I hit the enter button immediately. <laughs> I looked down and I was like, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hold on. Um, let me try that again.